Here we have chapter one in the writing section. Transitions. Okay, talking about transitions. So simply we're talking about words that could be used to indicate the relationship between ideas. For example, we have continue relationship. We have two similar ideas. We have uh, contrast. We have two different ideas, two conflicting ideas. We have uh, cause and effect, which means one idea is the result of the other one. How to indicate such relationship by using one of those transitions, by using one of those cohesive devices. Just to know, you already know all of those transitions. We already know all of them. Something like however, something like therefore, uh, something like similarly, uh, in fact, indeed, in addition, furthermore, we already know all of them, okay? But the difference today, we'll be discussing them and classifying them according to their functions, okay? So as we said, transitions, here we're talking about 15 to 20% of the test, eight to 10 questions per test. So one of the most commonly tested questions here, we have to make sure that we're completely familiarized with that type of questions, transitions. Again, what are transitions? We said we use transitions to indicate the relationship between two ideas. So here we have two ideas and there is a relationship between them. How to indicate such a relationship? To indicate that relationship, we just need to use one of those transitions. Okay, so it's all about expressing the relationship, indicating the relationship between two ideas, that's it. So to answer those questions, we have to read these two ideas. Of course, that's the point. We need to read the two ideas. We have to determine the relationship between them. Here we have that question, as you can see, including that blank, we just need to know what could be the relationship between these two ideas. Which two ideas exactly? It's the previous idea and the containing idea. The previous idea and the containing idea. We just need to check the relationship between them. We have to determine the relationship. The relationship could be continue in case we have similar ideas. Could be contrast in case we have different ideas. Could be cause and effect in case one of these two ideas is the result of the other one. Okay, let's see what do we have here in that paragraph. We just need to read these two ideas. Our first reader, safe. Let's check what we have here in these two ideas. The previous idea and the containing sentence, the sentence that contains the transition. Out loud, go ahead. I read the sentence. Um, yes, let's read that one, yes. Although T.S. Eliot devo devoted several years to writing The Wasteland, it sold only about 330 copies in the six month following its publication in 1922. Something okay. else. So, okay. So here in, in that one, in the first sentence, what are they talking about? They are talking about Eliot's Wasteland. What should we know about Wasteland? What did they mention here about it? That only sold 330 copies. Okay, that's good. Now we need to check the containing sentence. What do we have here? Here? Uh, hmm. Elliot was forced to seek uh, this one? Yes, this is the containing sentence. We have to read it now. Elliot was forced to seek other sources of income. Okay, so what do you think? What could be the relationship here between these two ideas? The first one, they said Elliot's Wasteland sold only 330 copies. The second sentence actually they are saying that it was forced to seek other sources of income we have three relationships safe okay we have continue relationship in case we have similar ideas we have contrast in case we have different ideas and cause and effect which means one idea is the result of the other one what do you think what could be the relationship between these two ideas what do you think say i don't know Okay, if we're going to check whether it's continue, contrast, or cause and effect, first, let's check continue. Continue, that means we have similar ideas. Safe, again, the first idea is all about? That he sold 330 copies. Yes, the, the wasteland, yes. Elliot Wasteland sold only 330 copies. Are they still talking about selling these 330 copies no. in the second sentence? So it's not continue. Okay, what do we have here in the second Sentence. They said Elliot was forced to seek other sources of income. 
mm, was forced to seek other sources of income. So what do you think? Do we have any contrast between these two ideas or cause and effect? Cause and effect. Good job. That's the point. Perfect. This is the relationship. Okay. This is actually the key step in answering these questions. There are two ideas. We need to check them. We have to determine what could be the relationship between them. So here we have it. In that case, we just need to determine the relationship. We said it's cause and effect. Okay. Everyone, here you have the full question, including the four answer choices now. Guys, waiting for your opinions here in the group chat, okay? Just text me your opinion. What do you think? Which transition could be used to indicate cause and effect relationship? Check the four answer choices. What do you think? Is it A? Is it B? Hmm. Waiting for your feedback here in the group chat. Yes, Rod. Good job. That's it. We just need to check which one could be used here to indicate the cause and effect relationship. Hmm. Okay, today, inshallah, we'll be discussing the three different classifications of transition. Okay, so for example, here we have cause and effect transitions. In that list, you have the most commonly used, the most frequently tested transitions. Okay. Check what we have here accordingly, as a result, as such, because consequently, for, since, hence, so, thus, therefore, to this end, all those transitions are used to indicate what? To indicate cause and effect relationship. Okay, guys, back to the four answer choices. You have another chance. You have another chance. What do you think? Which one could be used to indicate cause and effect? Yes, safe. Perfect. That's it. So we just need to check the relationship here could be, we said it's cause and effect. So the transition, the fittest transition to be used in that case, we need, of course, yes, we need cause and effect transition. So here we have it in B. Consequently, actually, is the correct answer. Here we have the cause and effect transition. Now we've got that question correct. We're done. So again, what happened here in that question? How to answer those questions? We said, step one, we need to read the containing sentence, the sentence that contains the transition. And we need to read the previous sentence. We need to read the containing sentence and we need to read the previous sentence. What do you mean by containing sentence? Guys, containing sentence is the sentence that contains the transition. We need to read that one. And we need to read the sentence before it. Okay, so two sentences, we need to read them here. The containing sentence, the one that contains the transition and the previous sentence. Why should we read them? Here you have the key step. Actually, we read these two sentences to determine the relationship between them. Okay, depending on that relationship, we'd be able to choose the fittest transition. So we just need to determine whether here we have contrast, we have similar ideas, we have cause and effect, giving an example, emphasizing the idea. Then we're going to check the answers to choose the fittest transition to that relationship. So again, it's all about reading two sentences to determine the relationship between them. Okay, let's see what do we have here in our following question. Guys, again, here we have that blank. Check the four answer choices. This thing, the transition. We have to determine the relationship between these two ideas. Now we need to read the containing sentence and the previous sentence. Guys, again, the containing and the previous. We didn't say before and after, okay? We didn't say we're gonna read what we have before, what we have after, okay? Later, we're going to explain why. So just stick to the process. We need to read the containing sentence and the previous sentence. Okay, our next reader, um, Ravat, let's check what we have here in these two ideas. We need to read them to determine the relationship between them. Go ahead. Okay. Conditions in the interior of Antarctica are inhospitable, inhospitable to many forms of life. Sub-zero temperatures, high winds, and extreme dryness make it impossible for most animals to survive. 
The Antarctic Peninsula and the surrounding islands have relatively mild temperatures and liquid water, allowing many species to thrive there. Okay, the first sentence here, what are they talking about? They're talking about the conditions of Antarctica. What should we know about these conditions? That they're inhospitable and their temperatures. Perfect. Let's check what we have here in the following sentence. Here in uh, that one, are they still talking about the same place or another place? They're talking about the same place. Here, the interior of Antarctica. Here we have Antarctic Peninsula and surrounding islands. Oh, it's different. A different place. What should we know about the conditions in that place? That uh, has mild temperatures. And? Liquid water. Is it inhospitable? No. Okay, so what could be the relationship? Is it continue? Is it contrast or cause and effect? Uh, it's contrast. Good job. Perfect. It's contrast. Now we just need to check the four answer choices, looking for the contradictor. Mm. In contrast? Good job. Here we have it indeed. Perfect. What done with that question? Okay. Good one. So here in these questions, guys, again, the process again, what should we do? Guys, step one, we need to read the containing sentence and the previous sentence. Containing, this is the sentence that contains the missing transition, okay? Or contains the blank, contains the transitions generally, and the previous sentence. The relationship is between these two. And actually, we have to read them just to determine the relationship, okay? If we're going to check, what do we have next? Once we're done with that relationship, we already have it. We're going to check the transition. We need to choose the transition that fits that relationship. And here we have it. Okay, so in that question, what did we do exactly? Here we had to read the previous sentence and the containing sentence to determine the relationship between them. We figured out that it's a contrast relationship. So we, of course, have to choose the contradictor, the transition that indicates that contradiction. Okay, so guys, here, first couple of pages, you just need to know that we're addressing the process. It's all about the process of answering that question. Here we have the process. Read the containing sentence, the sentence that contains the transition, and the previous sentence. Why? To determine the relationship between them. Then you're going to choose the fittest transition for that relationship. Okay, so this is the process for those questions. Guys, so far, any problems or any questions regarding that part, regarding the process? If all good, thumbs up. Okay. Perfect. In case you have any questions regarding any of these points, feel free to unmute yourselves, okay? And just ask whatever you want or text me the question in the group chat, okay? Okay. Next, we just need to <clears throat> clarify it more, okay? So next, we'll be emphasizing the three types of transitions and the three different types of relationships. We said we have three relationships. It's good, it could be continue, it could be contrast, it could be cause and effect. Continue means here we have similar ideas. In that case, we need to choose a continuer. What do you mean by a continuer? Continuer actually is a transition it could be used to indicate that two sentences are expressing similar ideas, but they are the same. So here we need a continuer. Okay, guys, just to know it, here you have all continuers that you need to know. Here you have all continuers that you need to know. Let's read them together, okay? Um, in continuers, we have different classifications. All of them actually are used to indicate we have similar ideas, okay? But they may have slightly different uh, functions, okay? So, to add information also, and furthermore, in addition, moreover, to give example, for example, for instance, specifically, to define or to clarify effectively, essentially, in other words, that is, to emphasize the idea, in fact, indeed, to compare similar things or similar ideas, likewise, similarly, uh, to indicate the sequence of uh, events could be previously, subsequently, vitally, and why. Here we have all continuers that you need to know. What do you mean by continuers? We're talking about transitions that could be used to indicate that. Here we have 
similar ideas. Okay, everyone, the following example, we used indeed. What is the function of indeed? We use indeed as a continuer to emphasize the previous idea. So we need to know why did they use indeed here? What do we have on both sides? Let's check this one with our next reader, um, Basma. Let's read this one out loud. Um, Irena Serena, a relative of the jellyfish, is one of the rare marine organisms to emit red light. Indeed, only a few other deep sea creatures produce a glow that color. Okay, Basma, what do we have here in the first idea? What are they talking about? Uh, a jellyfish. Yeah, what should we know about that jellyfish? What should we know about Arena Serena? It emits red light. Perfect. Let's check what do we have in the containing sentence. What are they talking about? Other deep sea creatures. What should we know about them exactly? They produce a glow that color. In that case, do we have similar ideas, different ideas or cause and effect? No, it's similar ideas. Good job. That's the point. Actually, this is the key step in answering those questions. You have to check these two sentences to identify or to determine the relationship between them. You've got the relationship. We have continued relationship. That's why, indeed, a continuer, which is used to emphasize, is used here perfectly. Here we have, okay, good one. Let's do it again. Guys, here in the second classification, the second type of transitions, we have cause and effect transitions. By the way, we did all of them. Remember, accordingly, as a result, therefore, thus, you know, all those words are used to indicate cause and effect. What do you mean by cause and effect? Here we're talking about words used to indicate that one action is the result of another. Here we have one action, is the result of the other one. Okay, in that example, they use therefore. We just need to check what do we have here on both sides. We need to check what do we have before? What do we have after? What could be the relationship between them? Okay, our next reader, um, Samar, let's see what we have here. Let's read that one out loud. Okay. Hello, Samar. Okay, once you're able to use your microphone, Okay, okay, no problems. Okay, once you're able to use your microphone, let me know. Okay, okay, guys, I'm gonna read that example. Okay, let's check that one together. Here in that example, they said, the light from most quasars was emitted when the universe was only a fraction of its present age. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about the light was emitted. Yeah, most quasars, okay. Uh, therefore, quasars offer an important clue to the appearance of the early universe. Okay, so one second. What made that clue for the appearance of the early universe? Actually, it's the light that was emitted from most quasars. Okay, so that means the second sentence is the result of the first sentence. Okay, one sentence or one action is the result of the other one. Here we have cause and effect relationship. In that case, we just need cause and effect transition. That's why therefore is the fittest. Here we have it. By the way, therefore is the most commonly tested uh, cause and effect transition. You should know it very well, okay? Mm -hmm. So first type of transitions, continuers. When should we use them? In case we have similar ideas. Second type of transitions, here we have cause and effect. When should we use them? In case we have one action that could be considered as the result of the other one, okay? Guys, we still have the third classification. We still have the third type. Contradictors. What are contradictors? Contradictors actually are transitions used to indicate that two sentences are expressing different ideas, conflicting ideas, two different sides. Okay, so here we have contrast. In case we have contrast, you should know. We need a contradictor, okay? What are contradictors? Here you have that list of contradictors, as usual, the most commonly used, the most commonly tested. Okay, alternately, alternatively, although, though, but conversely, despite, in spite, even so, even though, 
However, the most commonly tested in any case, in contrast, meanwhile, instead, nevertheless, nonetheless, on the contrary, on the other hand, otherwise, rather regardless, still, whereas, while, and yet. We already know all of them. Okay, what could be the difference here? The difference here is having all of them classified according to their function. There are three relationships in the English language. You should know them very well, and you need to know those transitions as classified by their functions. So here we have continue relationship. These are all the continuers you need to know. In case we have cause and effect tra transition or cause and effect relationship, we need cause and effect transition. Here you have all of them. In case we have contrast, here you have all contradictors. Okay, so we must memorize that page. Guys, this is page three, chapter one. We're gonna mention that page number um, in many occasions, by the way, okay? As we said, here we have one of the most commonly tested questions, okay? So you must memorize these three classifications of transitions, page three, chapter one. I'll have one last example here in contradictors. Guys, the used, however, we just need to know what do we have uh, on both sides? What are they talking about? Let's check what do we have here on both sides. Our next reader, safe. Let's check this one out loud. An increased reliance on computerized systems can leave users vul vulnerable to cyber attacks. However, current defenses are stronger than many people realize. Okay, the first sentence here is talking about that users could be vulnerable to Check what do we have here? Yes, cyber attacks, perfect, yes. What do we have here in the, 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 the second sentence, the containing sentence here? Are they still talking about cyber attacks, being cyber attack, or something else? Something else. Which is? Current defenses are stronger than many people realize. So the users are strongly defended. In that case, what could be the relationship? Is it continue, is it contrast, or cause and effect? Here? Contrast. Yes, perfect. It's contrast. That's it. So in that case, we need a contradictor. And of course, the correct answer for that, for that one is going to be having a contradictor. However, it is used perfectly for that relationship. So in case we have contrast, it must be one of those contradictors. OK, so three different types of transitions. And here we have them. OK, everyone, let's check what we have in that question. Guys, the process again, how to answer those questions, how to tackle those questions. Step one, you need to read the previous sentence and the containing sentence. So we need to read the sentence, the first one, which is the, despite, and the containing sentence starting from certain. Okay, we need to read them and we have to determine what could be the relationship between them. Okay, so for that one, what could be the relationship between these two ideas? Our next reader, um, Ragat, let's check what we have here in these two ideas. Go ahead. Uh, despite the sub-zero temperatures, high winds, and extreme dryness that characterize the Antarctic interior, a small number of hardy species dwell there. Certain mosses, lich lichens, and microscopic perotza have adapted to the harsh condi conditions and are able to thrive. Okay, so the first sentence here is talking about what? The not the temperatures and the small number of hardy species. Okay, uh, so it seems that they are talking about an, an hospitable place. As they said, here we have high winds, you know, sub temperatures, high winds, and extreme dryness that characterize the Antarctic interior. A small number of hard species dwell there. So it's not easy actually for most of those species to dwell there. Here we have small number that survived there. Okay, what do we have in the containing sentence? Uh, they're talking about the mosses, lichens, and they adapt to the harsh conditions. So what could be the relationship between these two ideas? Is it continue? Is it contrast or cause and effect? Here they mentioned some species that were able to adapt to that harsh environment. 
So the relationship here could be. Could okay. we continue? Yes, good job. Perfect. Here it's continue. That's it. So in that case, we need a continuer. Let's check the continuers here in that question. We have in addition, we have specifically. What is the difference between these two? In addition is used to add information. Add information. Yes, specifically is used to give examples. That's it. So what do you think? Are we just adding information or giving example? Uh, I think we're not giving example. So it's specifically. Good job. Here we have it in B. Excellent, Robert. That's it. Guys, here we have continue relationship. In that case, they are giving actually an example. They are giving, or we can say exemplifying that small number of hardy species that were able to dwell there. So here the correct answer we have it in B. And that one, we have continue relationship. Giving example, so specifically is the fittest answer. Okay. Let's see, what do we have next? Another question, but guys, here in that case, they are not testing the strong transitions. They're just testing the small transitions, the small ones, okay? Uh, something like the fanboys, something like the subordinating conjunctions. Uh, we'll be discussing them in detail in chapter two, okay? So what should we know about those transitions? You just need to know that those transitions are used to indicate the relationship between two clauses in one sentence. So do we need to read the previous sentence here? No, 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 no need. You just need to check the two clauses in one sentence. So where should we start reading in such question, testing small transitions? It's just the containing sentence. In other words, we have to get it starting from in contrast. Here you have the first idea, healthy, and the second idea, they. Both ideas, these two ideas actually are combined in one sentence using a comma. So we just need to check what would be the relationship between these two ideas in that sentence. We need to get it starting from in contrast. Guys, that question is going to be all yours. You have 40 seconds to text the correct answer in the group chat. Go ahead. Okay, if we're going to check the relationship here between these two ideas. Okay, some are still waiting for your opinion. You need to text your answer now in the group chat. Hurry up. So here they said, healthy Arctic marine mammals have a thick layer of fat beneath their skin. In the following idea, they said they are able to tolerate much colder waters. Guys, what could be the relationship here between these two ideas? Is it continue? Is it uh, contrast or cause and effect? What do you think? They are able to tolerate much colder waters. So they are able to tolerate much colder waters because of that thick layer of fat beneath their skin. Which means it's, yes, perfect, Robert, of course, it's cause and effect. As you can see, this is the key. Once we're able to determine the relationship, we're going to get the question done. So we need cause and effect transition. Here we have it actually in A. So is the fittest transition for that relationship. Okay. Um, okay, so here we have it in A. It's cause and effect and so. Okay, let's see what do we have next. Guys, following here, they are 
talking about or addressing the punctuation. So we're going to keep it for now. Okay. Let's have that exercise addressing the function. Guys, as we said, for transitions, there are two types of questions. Functional question and punctuation question. Functional question, they are just testing the relationship, whether it's continue, it's contrast, or cause and effect. Then we have another question testing punctuation. We're done with the first question, testing the function, testing the relationship. Here we have that drill, just to make sure that we're completely familiarized with these questions. Everyone, the first question. Here we have these two ideas. We need to read them to determine the relationship between them, whether it's continue, cause and effect, or contrast. Then we're going to choose the fittest transition. Guys, let's say for the first question, you're going to take all your chances. You have 50 seconds for question one. 50 seconds waiting for your answers in the group chat. Go ahead. Okay, hands up here for that question. Let's check what do we have here. So guys, the first idea, what do we have? We said in the past, coffees were blended to suit a homogeneous popular taste. Okay, one second. How many tastes in the past? How many? Guys, in the past, they said how, how many coffee flavors? Check that sentence. Is it one or more than one? It's a given. No, it's a given. A homogeneous taste. So it's, it's indicated, by the way. It's directly indicated here. It's only, yes, perfect. That's it. It's only one. That's it. Here we have one, one taste, one flavor. Okay. Take the following sentence. They said, Many different coffee flavors are now being produced. So what could be the relationship here between these two ideas? Is it continue? Is it contrast or cause and effect? Perfect, that's it, this is the point. Yes, yes, of course, here we have two different directions. Here we have two conflicting ideas, two different ideas. So it's contrast, that's it. Guys, we need a contradictor. What do you think? The correct answer here should be? We need a contradictor. Remember the contradictors? Yes. We said the most commonly tested contradicted. Good job, guys. Perfect. Here we have it in option C. However, the most commonly tested contradicted. You need to know it very well. Okay? And that exercise, you're going to encounter it maybe three or four times. You should know it. However, okay. That's good. Everyone, you're going to take your chances here for the following question. Okay? Again, 50 seconds for question two. We need the relationship. We need the fittest transition for that one. 50 seconds, then we're going to discuss it together. Go ahead.
Okay, time's up for that question. Mm -hmm. If we're going to check, what do we have here? Okay. Um, I, I, the first sentence, they said the researchers are unable to drill into the Earth's core. Guys, if that relationship is continued, that means in the following sentence, they'll be talking about researchers that they're still unable to drill into the Earth's core. Are they still addressing researchers in the second sentence, in the containing sentence? Um, <clears throat> actually, no, they're not. In the containing sentence, they said its chemical composition mm -hmm. remains a mystery. They're talking about what? As a score, actually, its chemical composition remains a mystery. Why? Because the researchers are unable to drill into as a score. Yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. That's it. So it's cause and effect. You should know it. These two sentences are not the same. So it's not continuing. Do we have here two different directions? Do we have your contrast or the second is the result of the first? Actually, it's a result. Okay, here we have cause and effect. So in that case, we need cause and effect transition. Yes, good job. That's it. Perfect. That's it, guys. Yes, excellent. Here we have it in B. Now all your answers are correct. Okay, here we have it in B. That's good. Let's check what do we have here in question three. Okay, we're going to do it again and you're going to take all your chances. You have 50 seconds for question three. Go ahead. Okay, time's up here. <clears throat> Guys, the first sentence, what are they talking about? The Taj Mahal is regarded as one of the eight wonders of the world. Okay, what do we have here in the following sentence? They said, some people believe that its architectural beauty has never been surpassed. We've never seen such beauty. So what could be the relationship here? Do we have similar ideas? Um, do we have a different ideas or cause and effect relationship? What do you think? Is it continue? Is it contrast or cause and effect? Yes, perfect. Let's say it's obvious that the first sentence is addressing Taj Mahal, the beauty of Taj Mahal. And it's regarded as one of eight wonders of the world. Of course, because of its beauty, okay? Second sentence, still addressing the beauty of Taj Mahal. In that case, it's obvious. The relationship here? <clears throat> Continue. That's it. Okay, guys, we have two continuers here, by the way. We have indeed to emphasize the idea. We have specifically to give an example. So what do you think? What is happening here? Are you trying to emphasize the idea or to exemplify, to give an idea? or to give an example. If we're just trying to give an example, it's gonna be B, okay? Trying to emphasize the idea, it's gonna be A. So what do you think? Yes, perfect, that's it. Okay, good job. Yeah, for, for, those, for those who said it's contrast, guys, what do you think? Here for that one? 
yes, it's continue and uh, yes, of course, yes, that's it. Perfect. Here we're just trying to emphasize the beauty of that building. So here we have it. Here. Yes, good job. Okay, guys, let's do it again. Here we have question four. Okay, you're having another chance. In that case, we have two ideas. We need to determine the relationship between them. Then we're going to make our decision. Okay, close reading. Here for that one, you have 50 seconds. Go ahead. The first idea here is addressing what exactly they said in order to save an endangered species. Preservationists must study it in detail. We need to study that endangered species in detail. Okay, that's good. Let's see what we have here in the containing sentence. Scientific information about some endangered animals is scarce. What? Scarce? What does that mean? Rare. Guys, do we have that information to study in detail? They said the information is scarce, so we don't have such information to study. In that case, yes, of course, perfect, Basma, that's the point. Guys, what could be the relationship here? The first sentence, they said, we have to study it in detail. The second sentence, give me the scientific information to study it in detail. Do you have it? No, that information is scarce. So what could be the relationship here? Guys, here we have two completely different directions. Here we have two different ideas. Here we have, yes, of course, perfect. So in that case, we have contrast. We need a contradictor. We need a contradictor. So you still have one last chance. You have five seconds. We need a contradictor. Which one here in these options could be used to indicate contrast, to indicate that we have two different ideas? A contradictor, a contradictor, yes, you should know it. You should know it. It's the most commonly used contradictor. Okay, safe and summer. The correct answer here should be the one that indicates contrast is. Yeah, we said the most commonly tested contradictor is, however, okay, the most commonly used contradictor is, however, okay. Back to page three, remember what did we say in page three, the, the three classifications? And in contradiction, we said the most commonly tested is however. Okay, you should know it very well. You need to know its function, okay? So here in that case, we just need a contradictor to indicate that contrast. Okay, so here we have the correct answer here in D. Okay, that's good. Okay, no worries. Okay, in case we do not know their functions, no worries. But we just need to uh, memorize page three. Okay, so guys, this is actually your main task here in that chapter to memorize page three.
OK. OK, <clears throat> let's check what we have here in question five. Question five is a little bit, you know, subtle. Here we have some tricky points actually in, in that question. So you're going to have one minute, one minute to identify uh, or to determine the relationship between the two ideas, the containing sentence and the previous sentence. Guys, one minute. Go ahead. Okay, let's say that it's tempting to be contrast. As here, the first one talking about ancient Egypt, the second talking about Nubians who constructed far greater number of pyramids. But just to know it, when we say that we need to determine the relationship, so you have to identify, let's say, the um, main focus of each sentence. So what could be the main focus of the first sentence? The main focus for the first sentence, they said that pyramids are most commonly associated with ancient Egypt. So when people are talking about pyramids, of course, they, yes, commonly associate them with ancient Egypt, okay? Let's check what we have here in the containing sentence. They said many people are surprised to learn that the Nubians who live in modern day Sudan constructed far greater number of pyramids than the Egyptians did. Guys, what is the main focus of the second sentence? Is it Nubians? No, 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 no. The main focus of the containing sentence is not Nubians. The main focus actually is the surprise. So why people are surprised to learn that Nubians uh, have constructed far greater number of pyramids? Because pyramids are most commonly associated with ancient Egypt. So what could be the cause of that surprise? It's, yes, the first idea. So the second is the result of the first. In that case, the relationship is, yes, one of them is the result. Here we have it. Now, the correct answer should be, we need cause and effect indication. We need cause and effect cohesive device. The correct answer should be, which one could be used here as cause and effect? Yes, perfect, Basma, of course. Okay, guys. For those who said it's continue, for those who said it's contrast, yes, perfect, safe, that's it. Here we have cause and effect. They are surprised. Why they are surprised? Because of the first idea, it's cause and effect. We're going to check the four answer choices. Cause and effect, we have it here in B. Yes, perfect. Good job, everyone. That's it. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, next, we're going to have 50 seconds. Okay, we have to identify the relationship between these two ideas, then we're going to choose the fittest one. 50 seconds, go ahead.
the first idea they said modern chemistry keeps insects from ravaging crops. Okay, it removes stains and uh, saves lives. Seems that here we have the positive side of using modern chemistry. In the following sentence, they said constant exposure to chemicals has taken a toll on many people's health. Guys, it has its own impact on people's health. So the relationship here is, yes, that's it. Now you've got, no way, it, can, it cannot be continue. No, here we have positive side. Here we have negative side. Positive side and negative side. Is it continue? Are they the same? No, they are not the same. So the relationship here, it's not cause and effect. <clears throat> it's not um, continue. Okay, here in that case, we have, yes, of course, the positive side of modern chemistry and the negative side, okay? Yes, of course, it's contrast. So the correct answer here should be, yes, I need a contradictor. Which transition could be used to indicate that contradiction? Yes, good job, guys, perfect, here we have. Okay, so in that case, the contradictor is, in option B, in contrast, that's it. Okay, let's play the same game again. Okay, here we have seven, two ideas. We need to determine the relationship between them. Okay, question seven, 50 seconds, go ahead. Yes, good job, guys. Actually, most of your opinions here are correct. The first sentence they said, music serves no obvious purpose. It has no obvious purpose. Okay. What do you have in the following sentence? They said, it has played a role in every known civilization on Earth. One sec, you've just said that it has no purpose. Yeah. Then you said it played a role in every known civilization on Earth. Yes. So do we have similar ideas or <clears throat> different ideas? In that case, here we have... So if no obvious purpose, then you can actually find it in every known civilization on Earth. So two different directions. In that case, the relationship here is, of course, it's contrast. We just need a contradictive. So the correct answer here, the contradictive, the most commonly tested contradictive. We said it. Yes, here we have it in option. Of course, yes, that's it. It's however. However, it's used to indicate contradiction. Okay, everyone, question eight, all yours. And for that question, you have one minute. Go ahead.
Okay, time's up. So far, we have the correct answer from Saif and Basma. <clears throat> Still waiting for the others. What could be the relationship here between these two ideas? First one, they said furs often attracted large crowds and led to writing. Then authorities were reluctant to grant permission for them to be held. They, they caused, you know, disturbance. So here we have authorities were reluctant to grant permission for them to be held. What could be the relationship here? Is it continue? Is it contrast or cause and effect? Perfect summer, that's the point, yes. So the correct transition here should be Okay, it's it's cause and effect, it's cause and effect, but cause and effect is not alternatively. Alternatively is a contradictive, okay? It's the second one in the contradictors list. Alternatively is used to indicate contrast. It's cause and effect, yes, cause and effect, but not, alter, you know, alternatively, you know, finding a, a replacement or making a shift in direction, it's contradiction, okay? It's a contradictive. So we need cause and effect. Yes, that's it. Here we have. It. Yes, good job, guys. The contradictor, we have it here indeed. Therefore, yes, good job. That's it. Okay, following question, here we have a simple trick that you need to know. Guys, in that question, they're testing the transition. My question for you, where should we start reading? We need to read the previous sentence. So. From where? Where should we start reading? The, the, the previous sentence starts at what? What could be the beginning? What do you think? If we're going to check the previous sentence, what could be the first word here in that previous sentence? This is the containing sentence, okay? So the previous sentence, where should we start reading? Yes, perfect, safe, that's it. We're gonna get us starting from here first. That's it, Basma, perfect. Guys, the question now, uh, <clears throat> do we already know who is her? Um, no, that pronoun is ambiguous. It's unclear, I have no idea who is her. Who's that lady? So in that case, what should we do? It would be better to get it from the beginning. Why? Because of that unclear, of that ambiguous pronoun. Guys, we just need to eliminate the ambiguity, you know? So we need to get it from the beginning just to know who, who's her. What should we know about her first, okay? Then we're going to check the relationship between the previous part, starting from although, till painted, then starting from some, till government. So here we have the two ideas to check. We just need to know what could be the relationship, continue contrast or cause and effect. One minute for question nine. You need to get it from the beginning. Go ahead.
Okay, time's up for that one. Uh, if we're going to check, what do we have here? Yes, perfect, guys. Actually, most of your opinions are correct. Good job, guys. Uh, the, the first part or the first idea is just talking about uh, parallels between uh, Monet and uh, Monet and uh, Metro. Okay, uh, there were a lot of similarities between them. Okay, this is the first part. This is the first idea. Okay, uh, yes, addressing the the parallels between them, the similarities between them. Guys, check what do we have in the containing sentence. They said some of her own late works unmistakably hark back uh, to the paintings that Monet produced in his twilight years at Giverny. Guys, still addressing the similarity between Monet and Mitchell. So the whole paragraph is just depicting the similarity between Mitchell and yeah, and uh, money. So in that case, here we have the similarity addressed on both sides. We have continued relationship. In that case, we need to check the continuers. Uh, just to know it, meanwhile is not a continuer. Meanwhile is a contradictive. Okay, we, we use it just to indicate there is a shift, okay, in direction. Okay, so the correct answer here, we have it in A, you know, adding more information to the topic. So here we have more. Okay, it's more. Okay, <clears throat> here we have. That's good. Let's check what we have next. Another question. Ten. Everyone, it's gonna be one minute for question ten. One minute. Go ahead. The first sentence, they said that they are addressing a study suggests that uh, consuming food late in the evening has profound effects on hunger regulating hormones, leptin and ghrelin, which influence our drive to eat. Okay. What do we have next? Guys, following researchers found that levels of hormone leptin, uh, which signals satiety, remained low for 24 hours for a group of subjects instructed to eat dinner late, whereas leptin levels were much higher in a group that ate dinner early. Guys, uh, it's not contrast, okay? Cause and effect, maybe. Continue in case we have similar ideas. So what do you think? The first one, they're addressing the effects on leptin and ghrelin. Effects of what? Of consuming food late. Next, here we have 
the study here we have something like an experiment actually okay so or case study in which they are still testing the effects of consuming food late on leptin and ghrelin that means Here we have similar ideas. Here we have similar ideas. Guys, these are not different ideas. And the second is not the result, still the same. They're still addressing the effects of consuming food late on leptin and ghrelin. Okay, so in that case, it's continue. Now you just need to check the four answer choices, looking for a continuer. What do you think? What could be the continuer here? Okay, that's good. So far, we have it correct from Basma and Ravat. Perfect. Waiting for the others. Okay, that's good. Yes, perfect, safe. Here, guys, they are giving an example. That case study is used here to exemplify the idea we have before. So, to give an example, you have three options. For example, for instance, or specifically, here you have it in C. This is the correct answer. Yes, perfect. Good job, everyone. Okay, so here we're done with that exercise. Guys, in the first part, what were we discussing here? As we said, we're just addressing the function question. They are testing the function of the transition. Testing the function of the transition. As you can see, continue contrast cause and effect. Okay, these are the three relationships and we just need to determine what could be the relationship between the containing sentence and the previous sentence. Okay, so for today, we're discussing transitions, and we learned that transitions are cohesive devices used to indicate the relationship between two ideas. How to answer these questions? We need to read the containing sentence and the previous sentence. There is a relationship. We have to determine that relationship, and this is the key to answer that question correct. In case it's continue, we need a continuer. In case it's contrast, we need a contradictive. In case it's cause and effect, we need cause and effect transition. This is the key. Okay, the first exercise we've done together, guys, but the second exercise actually is gonna be all yours. Okay, exercise number two is gonna be all yours. Here you have an exercise number two, you have 10 questions. It's gonna be all yours. Just to know what our uh, assignments are submitted on Nearpad. Everything related to our assignment will be texted to you once we're done. Let's say for the punctuation question, next session, inshallah, we're going to discuss it again. So for today, here we're done. Just need to confirm that, guys. So far, any problems with the function question of transitions? Any problems with the three relationships, the three classifications of transitions? In case you have any questions, any problems, just feel free to text them or to, as we said, unmute yourselves and ask the question. If all good, thumbs up. Okay, Rawat, okay, Samar. Okay, Saif and Basma. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, so guys, in your assignment, as you can see, we still have the same question, you know, the same question testing the function of the transition. Here we have that paragraph um, and that missing transition. We need to check what do we have in the previous sentence and the containing sentence. Depending on the relationship, you're going to choose the fittest transition. You're going to do the same in these 10 questions. This is your assignment for today. Okay? Everyone, as we said, everything related to our assignment will be texted to you on our WhatsApp group. So here we're done. Wish you all the best and see you next session, inshallah. Okay, guys. Ma salama. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Ma salam. Bye bye.